This is the Pilot Point Bearcat pregame show, brought to you by Homeland Roofing on PilotPointBearcats.com. And now, here's your host, Ryan Menard, with John Little and Chris Nordman. You're listening to the Bearcat pregame show, brought to you by Homeland Roofing on PilotPointBearcats.com. We're back, and it's the full crew. John is back. He's back in the great sure. state of Texas from his travels to Helsinki. Is Nokia bringing the book of the brick back? Well, Ronnie, uh, if, you, if you mean the, the Nokia thirty three ten, the famous brick from like year two thousand brick phone, no, we're not bringing that thing back. But uh, but you will be happy to know that my my jump shot, my basketball brick, is is live and well, and that's me uh, bringing it back to sports right there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, uh, one last thing before we get started, uh, Nordy, is everybody in the Nortman household fed? Everybody's got food. Nobody's going to be microwaving in the middle of the show. Yeah, yeah, definitely. We've had, we ate dinner a little earlier tonight. We did not eat dinner during the pregame show. The microwave's turned. You know, there's nothing in it. Uh, my wife Jackie is in her in the bed watching TikTok. She said she wasn't going to watch any shows. And she was going to be as quiet as possible this week. Uh, so we'll see. We'll see what she does. Okay. All right. Well, hopefully she doesn't get hungry in this 30 minutes. Go make some uh, bacon well, John, here a little bit. Yeah. We'll get into some Bearcat football, John. You missed a hard-fought loss at Farmersville. Um, special teams was really what cost the Bearcats in that loss. A couple kickoff returns that we just couldn't feel. Little low squib kicks that Farmersville got on and took advantage of with touchdowns. And then the loss at home to a, a Bells team that, while they're a small school, they had some big fellas up front. And uh, the Bearcats' defensive line really held the line of scrimmage fine. They weren't getting blown off the ball. But that wing T, man, it's tricky. Um, but all of that non-district stuff is behind us. And uh, the Bearcats are going to turn their attention to district play come Friday night on the road. So with that on the, in mind, what do the Bearcats need to do to put this 1-3 and three non-district schedule behind them? and just be them bell, bet their best selves this week in district play, John? Well, Ryan, as uh, some old wise man once said, a journey of a 1,000 miles begins with a single step. And I think in the case of our Bearcats, hopefully they learned a lot from that one and three non-district schedule. And right now we're, we're hitting the reset button this week and, and starting fresh. So uh, one and three will, will mean absolutely nothing for our Bearcats if they can get off to a, a great start. Uh, this Friday against, you know, a very, very tough opponent in this district opener. And, uh, you know, as I say, nothing worth accomplishing is, is ever easy. And I certainly don't expect uh, this Friday to be any easier. But our Bearcats, uh, you know, like I said, we got to reset and get to work Friday night. Norty, what do you what do you think it's going to take? Yeah, so I think this is the only division in football or kind of league where you actually kind of get four weeks of practice is how you can kind of view the the pre-district schedule, get to tinker with the new defense, tinker with some things on offense, see what you like, see what you don't, maybe see some players step up in different roles. And, you know, now going into the, the part that matters in district, hopefully we can – we're fine-tuned, we're ready to go. We've We've seen some tough opponents and – now we got some more tough opponents ahead, and hopefully we're ready for the challenge. I think the most encouraging thing to me that I have seen was there uh, weren't a whole lot of major gaps that you'd see in, in, in whether it be pass coverage, run defense, any of that stuff. I think the Bearcats need to just – this non-district schedule was a good reminder of staying on schedule and just having to do the little things right because really – in that Farmersville game, the little things are what cost them the opportunity to go on the road and, and get that win. The Calisburg game in the second half started getting away from doing the little thing right, little things right, little penalties here, little penalties there that really helped Calisburg uh, etch back into that game. So I think that's what they need to take from this non-district schedule to be the, their best selves come district play is the little things are just as important as the big things. And really, the little things are the difference between, you know, two and two and one and three so far. And the little things can be the difference between squeezing in the playoffs this year or not making the playoffs at all. So that being said, let's look ahead to uh, the district matchups this week. So district play starts this week. Paradise was 4-0 in non-district. They had wins over Lindsay, Munster, Godley, and Millsap. 
They take on the three and one Ponder Lions. Ponder got win, wins over Valley View, Dunbar, Crum, and their loss was to Godley. But in every one of those matchups, they put up a ton of points. I think they even they even put up uh, more than fifty in the loss to Godley. So that is a, a high powered offense in the Ponder Lions. So we have, like I said, four and zero Paradise versus the three and one Ponder Lions. We have the three and one Boyd Yellow Jackets with wins over Blue Ridge, Fort Worth Country Day, and City View, and a loss to Jacksboro, taking on the 0-4 Brock Eagles. Brock lost to Pleasant Grove, Wichita Falls, Hershey, Wimberley, and Gunner. Four just powerhouses of programs. So you know Brock is looking at putting a one in the win column this week and starting off 1-0 in district. Just as we say the non-district schedule, one and three record doesn't matter to us, that 0-4 for Brock isn't going to matter come play uh, district play. And then, you know, on their way to a, what they're hoping is another district championship and a long playoff run. Uh, Peaster is 1-3 and three with their only win being Castleberry. They lost to Toller, Jacksboro, and Wall. They are actually on bye this week, starting off districts, the district uh, play with a bye. And Whitesboro, who had a bye last week, is 3-0 and with wins over Crum, Bells, and Pottsboro. And that's where Pilot Point will be Friday night on the road in Whitesboro. Pilot Point, like we said, one and three, a win against Kalisburg, losses to Plainsview, Farmersville, and Bells. So that's uh, where we're all going to be Friday night. That's, uh, you know, Paradise is the only undefeated team going into the district play. Um, but some good records here, a little surprises with Ponder being three and one, Brock being 0 oh and four, and Peaster being one and three. So, I think district play, which I guess we'll have to wait until next week to see Peaster. Um, but, you know, they're supposed to get into the playoffs this year, and they start off one and three. So next topic here on the uh, pregame show, let's talk about Whitesboro. Turn the focus to the Whitesboro Bearcat. Whitesboro is 3-0 this season, coming off of a bye last week. They have the, like I said above, they have the wins over Crum, Bells, and Pottsboro. Whitesboro is led by senior quarterback Mac, Ar Mac Harper who accounted for 2,900 yards and 33 touchdowns last year as Whitesboro's quarterback. But he actually missed the game against Pilot Point last year in a, in a close game that Pilot Point left Whitesboro with a win. Grayson Ledbetter is Whitesboro's leading rusher and a great linebacker, but he's only played one game this season. However, in that one game, he had uh, 201 rushing yards, which is still enough to lead the team in rushing through three games. I was told that he's back and he will be playing this week. Whitesboro averages 46 per points per game on offense. And the Whitesboro defense, which is led by Dave Campbell's Texas football preseason district defensive MVP, linebacker Sterling Garten. He is uh, leading the defense. He's given up 23 points per game. And uh, the numbers there on average, the offense is doubling up the other team every week. So with all that, the basics out of the way, Nordy, tell me about Whitesboro. Yeah, Ron. So everything I've I've looked up, looked on what Max Preps and Dave Campbell's, they're just an overall good team. They they've got they're led by those two seniors, like you talked about, Ledbetter and Harper. Uh, Ledbetter does, I mean, only that one game, but he's he's a big focus this week on his running game and his play at linebacker. Uh, and then Harper, he's he's been averaging two hundred eleven yards passing and sixty six uh, rushing yards a game. Um, He's got a 120 QB rating score this year, so he's he's definitely one of their leaders. Going to be an impact player to watch for them, see if we can kind of handle him and control him throughout the game. Um, they look like a team we could probably score on. I, I know they're only averaging 23 points per game, but they they seem to be giving up a bunch of yards, and I think, I think maybe this could be a, a good fit for the Bearcats this week. John, what do you have on Whitesboro? Yeah, I'm I'm with Nordy as far as the the fit. I think it's a much better matchup than uh, than that Bells team uh, that we just played because Bells is a ground and pound, and with our thin roster, that really did not bode well for us. I think if, if this Whitesboro team has any uh, weakness, it's probably in, in the secondary. So hopefully, White Smith and and Aston Kirby and Crew Chandler can exploit that a little bit. But to me. I think by the end of the end of this season, they're going to be talking about this as the best uh, Whitesboro Bearcat football team in their history, uh, because they've got they've got studs at every skill position that you just that you touched on with with Mac Harper and and uh, Grayson the running back and uh, Jace Sanders the the 
wide receiver and uh, cornerback. They got they got guys that all over the field, and so I think that they will exceed even last year's team. And last year they were they were nine and five, uh, but they did go four rounds deep in the playoffs uh, prior to falling to Brock in the second time in the rematch, forty nine to fourteen in the fourth round last year. But they ripped off uh, seven straight victories after our Bearcats beat them thirty four to twenty eight in that overtime thriller. Uh, in the borough back on October 14th of last year. Um, And and we got them coming off of a a hard fought 42 to 21 loss to Brock um, in that game, the the previous game last year. So maybe they were licking their wounds still, but uh, this year they certainly aren't, aren't licking any wounds. As, as you mentioned, they, they ended up with a bye last week. So they got some unexpected rest and I'm sure they were probably, all eyes on the Bearcat game. So they've got a good scouting report and they're well rested and they're ready to, they're going to be ready to play against our Bearcats uh, this, this Friday for sure. I agree. This defense that our Bearcats are running out there, you know, when you play a gimmick offense such as Bell's, um, it's kind of hard to get a good reading on what your defense is like. So we'll take the, the Plainsview, Callisburg and Farmersville game. I think this defense is a very physical Defense, we do a pretty good job of playing at the line of scrimmage. The three safety look has helped control the passing game. And with guys running around like Colin Lynch and Kel Martin um, patrolling that linebacker position, they uh, they make a lot of tackles. So I do think this defense is set up to slow down the Whitesboro offense probably a little bit more – oh, quite a bit more effectively than they were to, to take on, let's say, a, you know, a Bells team. So I think Whitesboro, who possesses lots of firepower – I think Pilot Point has the defense to keep them in this game. And offensively, one thing I've been preaching all year, they're just going to have to keep doing is staying on schedule and not shooting themselves in the foot with uh, pre-snap penalties, holdings, and uh, special teams turnovers. So now we've gone through Whitesboro. We're going to step away and take a commercial break real quick and come back on the other side for players to watch and then the three keys. Homeland Roofing LLC has been serving the DFW area since 2014 and is a proud sponsor of Bearcats football. Homeland Roofing is a full-service contractor who specializes in storm restoration and provides end-to-end service for all insurance claims. If you've had storm damage, you've filed a claim, but have questions about that next step, or you'd like a complimentary inspection, call Homeland Roofing at 469-343-3536. 469-343-3536, or find us on Facebook, Homeland Roofing, Texas. And now we're back with uh, the players to watch for our Pilot Point Bearcats come Friday night. So we're going to go straight to Nordy and, uh, and get Nordy's player to watch for Friday night. Yeah, Ryan, so my player to watch this week is going to be our kind of captain on the offensive side, the White Smith. Uh, when you start district play, that's when your leaders need to step up. Let's see what this team's really made of. White Smith, he's the leader of the ship. He's going to be able to carry the team. He's coming off kind of a his worst game of the year, only throwing for 109 yards. And kind of Bell's kind of eliminated a passing game. So I'm, I'm really looking forward to White Smith having a good game this week, throwing the ball, slinging it around to these talented receivers we have. And, you know, in a game like this, it really impacts our chances to go to the playoffs. Every win's going to uh, account for us. Uh, you also got to have your your big players going to step up in big games, and with the battle three seventy seven and facing another Bearcat team, we're really going to need Watt Smith to step up and and lead this team and carry us. Perfect. Well, John, let's go ahead and throw it to you, and then we'll come back to you after me for the three keys. So, who's your player to watch? Yeah, Ryan, uh, I got Al- I got Alex Puga, um, number two. We're going to need our 5'8", 220-pound linebacker slash H-back on offense to have a monster game on both sides of the ball. And I think we're going to need Puga to acquaint himself early and often with with Mac Harper, Grayson Ledbetter, and Jay Sanders on that other side of the ball. Uh, it'd be nice to see uh, Puga sneak out and catch a few passes offensively as well. I saw in the, in the Bells game he had a nice little uh, catch out in the flat for a big gainer. Um, so – I think he'll be a huge factor, and we, we need him to, to to block his tail off for Gage Anderson and and uh, White Smith as well um, offensively. So for me, it's uh, our guy number two, Alex Puga. 
So similarly to last week, I'm going to do a position group. I'm going to do Kale Martin and uh, Colin Lynch there. Those those kind of those line that linebacker level. Those two guys fly around. They play with great physicality. They make lots of tackles. And the two leaders on the offense are Grayson Ledbetter, a tough running running back linebacker, and Mac Harper, who's the ultimate playmaker for Whitesboro. So I'm, we're going to need to. I expect that those guys are going to have to fly around and be extra physical with those guys. Especially a guy like Grayson Ledbetter, who who cherishes cherishes the the physicality and is going to be playing on defense himself. Let's uh put helmets on them. Let's hit them and let's make them pay for any time they decide they want to come. You know, through the middle, and let the linebackers clean it up. And uh, hopefully, you know, the defensive line can hold their own like they have been and create that space for the linebackers to run. I've been extremely impressed with those two linebackers, Colin Lynch and Kale Martin, the way they run to the football and the uh, the physicality that they hit with and that they're they're both really good tacklers in the open field as well. So I think the defense slowing down the offense is going to be as a big a part of this game as the offense staying on schedule because in the end there's a lot of firepower on that Whitesboro sideline and our defense is going to have to neutralize that to give the offense a chance. We're just not as explosive as we've been in years past. So we are going to have to try to win some of these grind them out games. So Kel Martin, Colin Lynch, those are my players to watch Friday night. And now that we've got two players to watch, a segment that we uh, have greatly missed because it's been, uh, let's say, a little lacking since you've been gone, John, the uh, three keys to the game. Chris gave it everything he had. He even, you know, he – I I can't see, man. You did not pass those jeans down to yeah, me, John. Yeah. He even it's busted out bad. the Olivia Newton-John and everything, and it I, just – I heard it. I couldn't heard get it. the same traction. So let's get physical. Physical. That's right. So we're gonna throw it back to you, uh, John. What are your? I knew you would appreciate that. Yeah, yeah. I was waiting for you to sing it. Yeah. So Ryan, key key number three um, for me is pressure luck. I love my favorite TV game show from the 1980s and still around today in a remake fashion. Uh, love love me some some pressure luck. Our Bearcats are going to need to, to press their luck and, and have a ton of big plays and no whammies all night long. We've already alluded to how good this uh, this Whitesboro team is, and our Bearcats are going to have to, uh, you know, be able to overcome. They're not going to be able to overcome any any major whammies, and by whammies I mean turnovers, blown coverages, missed tackles, and and key penalties. So they're going to have to play play a clean game, and hopefully we we hit the big bucks and we hit the big plays. Uh, all night long. That's key number three. So key number two, I've got Battle of the G Men, and our G Man is uh, is Gage Gage against the machine. Thank you, Caleb Marsh, for the the nickname. Our sophomore running back, defensive back, number seven, uh, Gage Anderson, of course, and he'll need to have his absolute best game of his young Bearcat career. And Gage's counterpart from the borough is their own G-man, Grayson Ledbetter. He's a senior running back, linebacker, uh, who you alluded to, Ryan, had had 201 rushing yards and he had two touchdowns in, in his only game this season. That was two weeks ago. Um, and Grayson also had an injury-shortened junior year, but he still had over 400 yards and nine touchdowns in just four games last year. Uh, he's had multiple touchdowns in every single game he's played in the last two seasons. So the battle of the G-Men is going to be one to watch for sure. And key number one. Let me get my radio blaring here. Key number one to me is, is big energy. I can tell you got big, big energy. Hey, Bearcats, we could be your fantasy. I can tell Gage got that big, big energy. So what I mean by that is, uh, you know, key number one, we're going to have to bring the energy on on Friday night. Our fans are going to have to bring it. The players are going to have to bring it. Can't have any letdown on any single play. It's going to have to be one one down at a time, one quarter at a time. Can't slip up for one, for one second. And uh, we're going to have to have that explosiveness of a Gage Anderson run, four-yard run, where he starts by being contacted, you know, by two linemen in the backfield, and he still overcomes that and 
somehow gets a four yard gain, we're going to need the rest of the team to, to play to that level and have that kind of energy every single play. So I think it's going to, it's going to be all hands on deck in this one, fellas, and for our boys to, uh, you know, to pull out uh, the well-earned uh, victory. They're going to have to live up to that moniker on the back of the helmet. We're going to have to be built different on, on Friday night in the borough. Well, you know, you normally your songs are a lot of older stuff, classic rock. You know, I kind of get it. I want to know where you're cruising around jamming that stuff to, to you know, the, the more modern uh, pop stuff. Oh, I forgot. I guess you do have teenagers. So, uh, yeah, I got a, I got a 17 year old and a, an 11 year old about to be 12. So, you know, I'm still, yeah, still somewhat cool. cool. I'm, I'm still I'm still in my prime. Still in his prime. Well, you heard it here. John's still in his prime, and hopefully the Bearcats can hit their prime come uh, Friday night on the road in Whitesboro. We'll be a little shorthanded again this week. John will be here, so John will be back on the uh, the color, and I'll be doing play by play. But with, uh, Chris has decided that he's going to take a road trip, you know, this weekend, so he won't be with us Friday night. Yeah, give us a little bit of extra incentive just to kick him while he's not there, so he can't, you know, can't say anything. That's right. But that's all we got for you tonight on the Bearcat pregame homeland uh, Bearcat pregame show brought to you by Homeland Roofing. So we'll see y'all Friday night from the roof of the press box in Whitesboro. And uh, go Bearcats! Go Bearcats! Go Bearcats!